Okay, um, there's two things that actually inspired doing this. One is you mentioned by Camisa Ateneo, and it's so weird that the, the Biodiversity Conservation Society in the Philippines, which I am also a work member, kami uh, hinila para mag-discuss yung lineage or tissue parallelism between um, Pokemon, or Pocket Monster, and that of conserving biodiversity in the Philippines. Um, it's just a bit odd, because when I got their email, all of them said about Pokemon. Ako lang seryoso. So ako talaga, nag-research ako. Talaga may background naman ako sa Pokemon because when I was young, I played with the Nintendo Pokemon. Young. Young girl. Those on, why those on the Nintendo DS? Before the Pokemon Go sensation. Play cards lang pa. Ito to, yung original version of Pokemon. And also, yeah, I also watched some of the cartoons. For those who haven't seen it, it's, it's really interesting cartoons. It's actually between young and old. It detaches the imagination of both young and old. Um, so, yun nga, ako na naglagay ng maraming Pokemon dun sa. Dahil sila, diniscuss nila, is talaga my diversity. Parang, oops. But anyway, good na rin kasi at least nasagot nila yung theme nung ako na yung nagpresent. So here we have, interestingly enough, one of our photos of Graflesia. Uh, that we taken from one of our expeditions, well, mini expeditions going up to Makilin, the photo shoot because in the the last time it had bloomed. And we usually that we have a um, fit of bloom there, which is inspired by Graphisha. And also a bit on the adult Balbasar. So the Balbasar is not the only one that is But, and see, I forgot his name, the other Sauber. Uh, often, if you hear them in the cartoons, or uh, they're actually very digitized, you won't recognize them in the original uh, game. It's only after they made the posters that the Mobas and cartoon versions. And then, of course, the cartoons use them, and then you know they developed in Pokemon Go, it's the cartoon version on the app. For those of you who have the app, they the app. None of you, yes. The reason why I downloaded the app was because of one student who did this going to the museum. I asked him, what did you do? He said, I'm going to Pokemon Go. So why did he go to the museum? Because of course, of course, it's all everywhere. And I realized that the, that the museum was actually a level 7 gym. So parang I said, ah, how do we incorporate that? We are in a sense. Because that's usually the process is you ask the makers of Pokemon Go to assign your institution as a certain either a gym or may sa pasi natin tao ng Pokemon Pokestop. Eh, bigla na lang tayong assign na ako niyo. So it's best to understand bakit nga ba? So one part is we are dealing with biodiversity in the real world. So you know that all these life forms, both plants, animals, microorganisms, even ecosystems that they have represents biodiversity. And we know that Philippine biodiversity is okay. exceptionally rich. And one thing that we need to understand further, it's very diverse. in the virtual world. So parallelism in terms of what species they actually have. So again, for those who use the term Pokemon, some people don't like it because it is, again, Japanese. Um, it's a shortened version of Pocket Moon. Mm -hmm. So there's only about 800 species, and they're just growing slowly. Because they develop in China, when game the diverse, what they added to the species list. So Bulbasaur, as we saw earlier, see Mewtwo, which is a cat version. So you have to get the names associated with the species that they want to capture for that particular uh, group. So those fictional characters, the Pokemon, are usually caught by what we call Pokemon trainers. So in the Pokemon Go, once you capture, you're considered a Pokemon trainer. Because the train mo yung nahuli mo for battling, and that's for the game. So it's really odd na pwede hindi mo siya iparalad sa atin, kasi hindi naman natin pinaglalaban yung mga nakikita natin species. Although pinaglalaban natin in the journal, but not in the level of what we actually do. So originally it was created in the 1990s by Satoshi Tajiri, so she's the father of Pocket Monster. And we then had his um, partner, Ken Subimori, she developed further into the game. So some of the original ideas were by uh, Satoshi, but si Ken developed the idea of his characters. And of course, there were role-playing games in Nintendo DS that started in Japan, of course, emulated around the world. 
So it turns out Python had the Pokédex. I mean Pokédex. Pokédex is sort of a database. The same system we use for database in our own collections. So yun yung parang classification system nila. Kung paano nila i, i, i arrange for each of those 800 species. Uh, so it was actually also very much virtual. So pag nakahuli ka ng Pokémon, gusto mong alamin ko ano yung strength, ko ano yung type nung nahuli mo, you go back to your Pokédex. It's like a virtual computer. Parang hindi siya laptop. So if you go to the original game, papasok ka sa room, siya pa digitast yun, square square. So yun siya doon sa kaal. Papasok siya doon, tatapat siya doon sa parang computer, ay yun si Pokédex. So talabas na yung question whether what you have, uh, the strength, everything you want to know about the species in the Pokemon world. Okay, all of them are derived from real plants and animals, and it actually sort of emulates our own museum catalogs, the Pokédex. Database in check. So it's analyzing how many species that you have around in your list. So here is just one way of looking into uh, our own uh, biodiversity. So this is more worldwide, and just understanding ano nga ba talaga yung number of species that you have. In a way, at the moment, have a total vertebrate is about 60 to 65,000. 66 to 12 million. I'm not really sure how much the splits would come to this. Um, for invertebrates, it's a million and a half. For uh, plants, it's about less than half a million. And for the uh, the lower forms of plants, the non-vascular plants, you have about 50 to 51,000. So, it's a quantity by yung number. So, in a way, in a way, we're looking into that. A version of Pokemon, because the slogan of Pokemon is "Gotta catch them all." Ganon din yung gusto natin slogan in the museum is trying to understand and um, quantify or qualify and determine how many species there are. So in a way, we use this system. Everybody's familiar with that system of taxonomy, invented by Carlos Linnaeus. Of course, everything now is more or less changed by a lot of inference and a lot of techniques. So taxonomy, being the science of classifying, systematics, uh, arrangement, including phylogeny, to determine relationships between those species. So you can use that to identify diversity in, the, in our world. So Pokemon, it's a totally different. So here it's hard to parallelism. So for them, it's more about strength, agility. So you can classify them based on their type. Ano yung pinakamalapit yun ang classification in terms of ano yung, um, anong group of animals ang kanilang nabilik? For example, is it a bug? Is it uh, a dragon? So yun yung kanilang classification. So not very much taxonomy. It's more about how they use their powers, especially if their powers are based on elemental powers. Fire, water, earth, movement, psychic. Si psych duck. Psych duck. Have you heard of psych duck? Yung parang itsura na ang drawing niya, parang Donald Duck, pero parang mm -hmm. medyo. Oh, Oo, oh, kasi psych duck, may, may psychic power siya. Okay, it's also weird because yung transition nila between species is what they call evolution. It's not the same as what we think about evolution. Sa kanila, that species will evolve into that species. <laughs> of course, that is not how we classify species. Hindi naman pagka ang Ang caterpillar ay nagmetamorphose into butterfly. They're two different species. Sa kanila kanon. Mm -hmm. So again, there's still that fanta fantasy version. So misan hirap din siyang gamitin pang turo. But of course, the diversity itself it actually works. So Spiro evolves into Firo. Kasi nagiging mas matapang lang siya. Interesting enough, of course, all these animals are based on real animals. In a way, of course, with the elementals. So that goes. So ito, elemental is lightning. So lightning plus the pika. Pika is actually um, a species of it's not a rodent, it's a lagomorph related to rabbits. So jan galing si pika. Chu. Of course, that long version si yan. See, who remembers the smaller one? Pikachu. Pichu. Pichu. Thank you. Pichu. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so here is, I got this from Andrew Berman. It's a blog site who 
represents 14 species, well, 14 Pokemon, whether you can consider them a species, um, based on real world organisms. So Poliwaz was based on tadpoles, especially those with translucent circular uh, intestines. Circular intestines. Goribis mm -hmm. is based on a chimera. Chimera is um, related to sharks. They are, well, they're the last small, they're not the last small uh, They are chondritic, they cartilaginous fishes, which has an opercular. Of course, mm -hmm. when I'm not opercular, you know, the Of course, they have to stylize those species. Yeah. And here is uh, Caterpie. So they're not specific, it was based on the tiger swallowtail caterpillar. And you can see the parallelism between the, the shape of the antenna. This is based on the kissing gurami. Also the same thing, they empower a lot of the characteristics. So it's a this ninja. Whether that's a power or not. Um, Mudkit is based on axolotl. Axolotls are unusual groups of salamanders. They're salamanders which have retained the pedomorphic characteristics. So in adults, they still have the gills. I think axolotls are quite a rage now. Actually, in some biosphere, they're like a sham. Axolotls, how did they die? It's amazing how they come in different colors. Kukudai, uh, it's a weird thing. Kukudai was space either an agarial or a false garial. Of course, the shape of uh, the snout is typical of a narrow shape, so that button is not a bit just garial rather than actual crocodile, because crocodiles are more of a tapered shape. So, in our book, when we sun, it's more similar. We did them again, going back to that Rafflesh Pokemon. So, anything even the powers of smell was empowered into the video. Uh, Chatops, I don't know how it's actually pronounced as Chato. It's like one of the other names. Chatops. It's based on the yellow colored lovebird, which is the African lovebird. Not the lovebird we know because there is a version of the name lovebirds in the pet shops in the Philippines, which actually is a bajerica, and we'll not go into that further. Oops, sorry. Picture. Victor Biel is a picture belt, picture plant. So yeah, the picture plant, not an any pin. So vampire picture plant, probably. I don't remember playing with this one, so I don't know how, how it actually works, how the powers of Victor Biel occurs. I can imagine it popular for a while is Science Splash, because it's represents a pangolin. Uh, same thing with those long sharp claws for uh, catching and opening uh, ant or termite mounds. You know, it's uh, as more or less, you know, samurai type. So you have any power. But again, at least not the sand slash, not the pangolin, especially now the pangolin is quickly becoming endangered because of over collection. So I think that is where you draw the interesting parallelism, how you can create awareness for a species that is endangered, such as the pangolin. So if their kids grew up liking sunglash, mm -hmm. so in a way they could influence whether their family may use traditional Chinese medicine and use pangolin plates for medicine. Drowsy is a Malay tapir, looks the mud because of the snout. Although this actually is, what do you think picture of me, I Andrew. Uh, this is a, a young uh, tapir. Young tapirs are camouflaged with these stripes, they're usually black and white, especially the Malayan tiger is black and white. We mm -hmm. have a is yellow and black. Axelos is a Commodorus. scientific name, Commodorus Lochi. Of course, for people who don't use scientific names, I'm not often making it. But it's the biggest mistake they often make, just like the one in our money. Capitalize on specific evidence. So, <laughs> Maggie Carp is a carp, supposedly. <laughs> However, Andrew Brignan thinks that it's a rockfish because it does look more like a rockfish, but to me it looks just like a goldfish. So, again, it's like go beyond the actual parallelism. The stockfish looks like a stargazer, yes. It's a bit more flat than a stargazer. 
Have you seen actually a stargazer in the wild? They're ugly. Actually, in Kalaban, ko lizard. I hate lizard fish, especially in the Philippines because they're reef fish and they like you say babon ng reef. They like to stay just on top near. Kusa ang kaon dalang way. Spagong ni Ranger. Iba para kung magkad. Ika esh ka sa somewhere. Okay, again, going back to what Pokemon thinks of evolution is actually species transformation or transformation for that matter. Because it's even within the species or within the group, as they call it. Uh, it's not based on actual relations between those species. Um, so, yeah, see, PG, because of the evolved in powers, gain uh, and points, and addition and gain and battle, it will then evolve to PG auto. And then you develop again those those points, you then evolve into a geo. And of course, all, well, nearly all Pokemon are we considered oviparous. Mm. Why? Because they're all hatched from eggs. Mm. Whether they're mammal, they're an insect, they're, they're all in the same one particular ball that they use. Uh, for now, we look at taxonomy based on relations. So our version of evolution, amazingly, here's one of the recent uh, phylogenetic trees that evolved for birds, we now know that falcons, parrots, and sparrows, or passeriformes, are all related to each other. They are now one group, uh, U5, or Nimorpha, and also a smaller group between the passerines and the cytosines. It's amazing. Uh, it totally changed our view of birds. Because that they falcons related to eagles. Mm. No. <laughs> the eagles are now related to Egret. So weird that you see the tagak on top of the carabao is related to the Philippine eagle. Why? <laughs> but not, evolution has its way. And of course, the most recent paper, because um, all of these are molecular phylogenies, they use certain genes or concatenation of genes to understand what relationships there are. Um, now we're going into genomics. So this is, I think, the idea actually we discussed in this is a workshop for forest kind of genetic genomics. Nagulat ako na it was the ornithologists who actually embraced the idea of genomics. So a lot of species, it's very expensive. You need a lot of next-gen sequencing to get the entire genome. It's 1.2 million bases. No, 1. So 1.2 gigabases. That's a lot. Even with mitogenomics, you need about 35,000 bases. A regular gene is about a thousand, mm. just two thousand bases. But not five hundred, right? And you see OI gene only use less than a thousand. So you see the information versus a thousand bases or one point two gigabases. So you understand more about the evolution. So for ornithologists, they took the whole genome of forty-eight birds. That's the most species in any group that has been sequenced for full genome. Before it was just the Human Genome Project, just the base. Kaya na yung Tarshir. Tarshir has a whole genome because of the Human Genome Project. Okay, in a way, if you've done Pokemon, Pokemon Go, yeah, so at least there is a. I opened my Pokemon Go, put the application just to know and take a snapshot of what the museum was being a gym. After that, I caught one. And then never caught anything again. <laughs> so never actually played it. I'm still the original Nintendo Wii as soon as I And I still play it up to now. So here in version of Pokemon Go. So it's amazing because now it's the reason why it went berserk. Because in Nintendo DS had the original computer version, which is digitized. And they were like little square things. You wouldn't even recognize oh, Pikachu. Because Pikachu was all square with it. But it was a cartoon version of it because of the app. So people now have a better view of what they look like. Check out the interaction course. And because of it's all in a mobile phone, then you interact with a lot more people. And you can calculate your evolution using the combat power. So you determine your combat power allows you to have a multiplier for your evolution. If you don't have enough of your CP points, then you can evolve. There is a bit of high tech involved in it. It's not just a game. Of course, for us, we try to use our own versions of 
calculations to determine species or transformations. You know what you call it species li limits or delimiting species. Determine how many species there are. Of course, each of us have our own groups. In MERGs, we now use a standard criteria, which is, of course, familiarized to Chris, because he's in the thesis now. Uh, we use both genotype and phenotype to address a lot of those differences. For most of us, we use the usual PCA, or principal component analysis. For me, I use both, both looking into genetic divergence and phenotypic divergence using that uh, criteria. Again, criteria used on quantitative analysis. So it uses the phenotype, both vocalization, color, plumage, behavior, and then we match it up with genetic distance, using a threshold to match up. From that point of line, <laughs> means that there is some sort of linear relationship between the genotype and the phenotype. Okay, beyond the usual species that we know in Pokemon, of course, everything is a ladder. They can do anything with it. So they can include things which are legendary and mythical. So the level groups actually end the original like start. So if you know, um, you, you, the way they add the species is not because it was created. It was created by batch. Because it's all design. So batch by batch and maybe design. There is such a term they use. I forgot which term it is. But they use a certain, parang, uh, once they introduce, it's always a certain batch. Um, so within that, you take you. And then, yeah. Parang it's like a Pokemon talaga. Generation. Thank you. I was looking for that word. So each generation, he add that every other year. <laughs> so again, so a certain set of generations. So for a later point, that is the legendary to mythical, but again, it's a narrow definition. So the last set of generations, they combined all of them into legendary and into one group. Uh, so species which are unusual still has uh, a bit of lineage towards real species. So these are the elemental birds, uh, the legendary birds. They were actually based on real stories from Tokyo in the Kanto region. Ah, Kyoto pala, Kyoto, Kanto, Kyoto. So these are based on the Kanto region mythology, Zato, Satikuna, and Mopres. So they're actually real legendary, for, well, in folklore. In our way, we think the same thing in terms of flagship species. Uh, our, of course, our national bird, the Philippine eagle. Uh, also, species which we think are important for conservation, such as the Philippine crocodile, which is now regarded as the most endangered crocodilian in the world. And it also points in the think of ethnobiological value, or ethnomythological value, or you can think of it as bird lore. Uh, you can see the matching two designs, both above and below. Which one is Sabi Manok? It's amazing. That is Sabi Manok I've taken a photo from the Museum of Aga Khan, which is in NSU Marawi. So it's one of the real, because it's, it's a Marawi myth, so sila yung masta ka alam po, itura dapat ng Sabi Manok. Look at the long bill, the crest, and also holding something at the end. It was a big fish. Bumi Kenyala, or Kenyala, which is another mythical bird from Indonesia, from, from Malaysia, particularly from the Ibans and, and uh, from the Ibans of uh, Sabah and Sarawak. It's, there's striking similarities between the two. And of course, they're next to each other in Kenyala and Borneo. So we think Sari Manok is not a Manok. It's not a chicken, but actually a Kenyana, which is a horned dog. We just made the wrong translation. Because for us, we're translating it in Tagalog, not in Marawi, which is originally Malay. So if you use Tagalog, what is Sari Manok? Sari, very diverse. Manok, chicken. So that's why ABS-CBS has the flying chicken in the logo. But if you look at the Marawi version, Sali in Malay means ethereal. Manuk is bird. So it's an ethereal bird. The same thing that Kenyalang does. Because the Kenyalang is the purveyor of souls. 
So Madame parallelism between those two groups. Okay, so at the original version of the Vendor, yes, so we go, it's all square, square. More different from what we know now in Pokemon Go. So and nakita talaga ng expansion. So it was a bit quiet for the original Nintendo DS because it wasn't as pretty looking. It's more of a game as opposed to the mobile app version that we got from uh, Pokemon Go. And of course you have these different training areas. So the Pokemon Gym, which is one of the, yeah, the museum is considered as a Pokemon Gym. So even gym no una that the base of the the gym that's a Pokemon Go. So I'm looking at the difference. So it's an area where you train, you also get certain, the Papai Pokemon Center and Pokemon Mart is that's where you buy certain items, including the, the ball. May on the ball, you can buy in every banqueta. Punta kami ng Didiso, eh, lahat na pinibenta Pokemon Balls, parang Christmas ball, Pokemon Balls na lahat. Yun ang nakaisabit natin sa Christmas tree. And that being the same thing with the museum, being a level 7 gym, but we consider it as a repository for natural history specimens. The same thing as you think about uh, being manned by a formidable taxonomist, the gym is also a formidable trainer. So get that about the in the world. We always have these two groups. Also, a certain center is housed by a professor. There is a professor. So I need to blend those two together, blending the virtual world and the real world. So I need to catch, got to catch it. It's an amazing uh, slogan that Pokemon has. It's got to catch them all. I actually can do that in the game. Because there's 800 different, I don't know what you have to release a few because of the certain limitations of, of uh, storage. <laughs> Ah, so it's not a preparation for the DVD. Yes, I remember now. Ah, it's a deposit in the museum. It's a center. Oh, it's a deposit in the museum. 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 But you can collect them all eventually. So the same thing that we have in terms of you. So the trainer actually goes around city to city looking for these Pokemon. The same thing as we do and conduct biodiversity surveys and expeditions and we go to different places for us to find and catalog these different organisms. So yes, you can use that as a part of Amazingly, in a way it helps us understand biodiversity of our own. Of course, start off with cartoons and games as kids and then as you grow up, if you want to be a real taxonomist, a real Pokemon trainer, then yes. Although I don't think you're going to battle your species at any way. Maybe diagnosis is the way of battling, doing a diagnosis. So here, the same thing happens in the Philippines. We're still trying to catch them all. Just for birds, we have discovered the following in the last 10 years. So it's a new species that comes in Polasisi, uh, the Korean rail, um, the one which um, Philip helped uh, discover the Shadow Magic ground babbler, uh, sorry, ground warbler, which is no longer a babbler. You know that thing, Raborite? Not a fair Raborite. Now, Robonsonius uh, from Sony. And recently, there were two new species of hawk owls. Uh, this is the Cebu hawk owl. Also, in a way that our list grows because of the split. So, looking into the uh, use of bioinformatics. We have all these new splits. So the top ones are the one we call the splits. Mm -hmm. So before your know, Walden's hornbill was considered the same species as the Midden horn, wrinkled hornbill, uh, until 2000 it was split, and then we helped uh, provide the data that allows us to quantify and understand really that they are two species rather than one. At the image of na itong tatlo. So at all same thing, they use the criteria to split the Cyan Hornbill from that of the Mindanao, sorry, the Cyan Broadbill, which is found in Samar Lake and Bohol, from that of the Mindanao Broadbill. The two ones is the species we all take for granted because you find them in your backyard. The magpie robin and the pied fan tail we call Marekapa. So we changed the name again to Philippine Magpie Robin and Philippine Pied Fan Tail. If you go to Singapore, Singapore, you'll see the pie panda and the magpie robin. They look similar, but they're different. Then you'll see that you know, I'm gonna split. Okay, 
Another thing is, from this term in my back, the bird watcher, because there's more eyes out there. I think that's amazing as we use citizen science that helps us understand. So it's not just taxonomists and scientists, but also enthusiasts. I think everybody in mean, entomologists here you know, would understand the importance of butterfly watchers in finding and photographing distributions of butterflies around the Philippines. The same thing with us, all these bird watchers and bird photographers got all these four species based on photographs and then we go, ah, oh, that's not the one we had before. And all of these are new records. The pelican from Leyte, there's now three pelicans in the Philippines. That is a line, it's fat bill. Um, this is a drongo, long-tailed variable drongo. In Los Banos, actually, we now have two. In Balikasio, you know, just put them oh, there. Right. And then they got a photograph of the black drongo, which is migratory from Erie. So yeah, you don't take your drongos for granted, because now you realize, how oh, a black drongo here. Yeah. And we don't have that much geese mm -hmm. until somebody photographed a flock of geese in Kandaba. There's actually two species now. <laughs> And most recent is a more falcon. Um, even Kabago is the spotted falcon from Mindanao. It's amazing what amazing halo na ka yashu mo the species kasi meron ka. And then you realize, oh, it's different. You haven't seen that before. So we don't take things for granted anymore. So dun to madami and discovery. It's not just new species, but also new records. From kanayon, it's weird because all of our bird watcher friends, um, we used to bring just the field guide. You want to know that I have to do one, get to get to do one, and then we're going to Kennedy. 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 Now they also bring birds of East Asia. Oh. Why? Because you might take a picture of a flycatcher that hasn't been recorded in the Philippines before. So give us a mind identify. Okay, so this is just a rough estimate we got from the internet. Uh, what species were discovered? And of course, what needs to be discovered. So if you put that concept of gut crash them on, oh my god. So it's the entomologist which has the biggest um, uh, work to do. Because that's over how many? It's almost a 10, 10 million species that we need to find. So with that, thank you for listening. And I hope we are able to do the parallelism. So this point in the game I meant to add that as ID sort of things about that. Simple but sort of things about it. So the game I meant to say that the museum earlier, because in response to that student doing this, you know, anong parang tumata kasi ata to sa ESA entrance, kasi tila tila chusha. Di pa rin nila kikita. Kung pasok na siya ng building, so yes, it's okay to play as long as you're willing to pay. Okay, um, quickly just a few species. So we see butterfree, it's actually based on, I don't know which species it is, this is the, I think the white butterfly, cabbage butterfly. Mm -hmm. See metapod yung kanilang version ng chrysalis. See ikans, that's arbok. Yeah, so see ikans, it's really arbok. It's really weird how they evolve. Like from a rattlesnake mm -hmm. to a cobra, mm -hmm. a viperidae to an elapidae. It will never happen because they're two different families. Then you have sparrow and wax. Well, PG becoming a sparrow yeah. or wax. So, you don't know from which talaga. Feeling they're both. So, elements of what they think is a sparrow and elements of what is a wax wing, which are two different birds, two different families, more representing PG. Mm -hmm. Same thing with that. Talk with you talaga. This sparrow, sparrow hawk siya una. Pag nag evolve siya, magiging fero which is based on a heron. So, ah, okay. Sinira niya ang idea of taxonomy and classification for kids. Biglet, because it digs. It's based on mole, but it does look like a sausage with a face. Okay, but you see seal na binabi spelling. Becoming seal. So, with all, have you seen Hunt Watch, by the way? Labas kagabeta ka the other night. Ah, it's really gory. It's about, Revisiting the effects of um, uh, seal watching for the fur trade. Because in the 80s, Latigilsha, because of the picture of this cute seal, you can see it's that in transition, they're all caught in white. Not that what happens on the first sweet coat. Because they will change later, right? These harp seal. 
begins with P. Anyway, there's a, uh, there's a really sh short version of their clubbing, pure white. Get into that many clubbing. There's two versions of the word clubbing. Clubbing, which is going to clubs. And clubbing, which is clubbing those to death because of the fur trade. So now it's back again into view na, ano pa nangyari dun sa mga species there. Anyway, so that's it.